Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Just stepped out of the house because I was getting so bored watching Netflix. Compared to at least December and January, I can at least step out. Such a bad timing for this, but I shouldn't complain. A lot more people are being affected by this. All I can do is stay home. Small thing. Just having some chai. Like it's so calm. I just noticed that uh, the center stand, the bar that connects the center stand in the bit in in the middle, is slightly uh, uneven. Interesting design, but that's the bike parked most of the time. I had a chance to take it for a short spin inside my colony. Everyone was looking at me and the bike so strange because first question what is this guy doing uh, riding a bike here when everyone's indoors and what is this bike you can tell from the stairs what it is about oh man it was so weird i was on a bike just taking it for like a two minute spin inside my colony the roads are empty i wasn't in contact with anyone and uh, i didn't sit on any surface besides my bike anyway so got it back home and kept it uh, there but this is actually an amazing time to learn few skills on the bike so let me actually show it to you guys so mind the uh, dust on the bike there's no point cleaning it because i don't have a cover uh, the cover that I had uh, on my street wind doesn't fit this, so I gave it away. We'll get back to the topic of street wind later, but for now, this is the bike. I'll wash it when I get a chance and when I think I can take it out, but uh, no point cleaning it because it'll get dirty again. There's so much of open air and dust here that this is just from one day. Yeah, let's uh, take it off the center stand. So this is almost 229 kilos fully fueled. Add accessories like these uh, pannier frames and engine and tank guards from Hekkobeka, which would make up at least 15 kilos of weight. It's almost a 250 kilo bike. Anyway, so let's take this off the center stands. Always have the side stand on just in case you need some extra support. So let's do it. So right now the activity is you can balance these bikes with just a finger. Unfortunately, I don't think I can do that, but let's try at least. So we'll go from here and come back to this position. So it's in first gear, so it doesn't move. I'm actually for the sake of this exercise going to lock because you don't want any movement there. This is not the way people do it, but this is how I'm doing it. I'm learning it for the first time because I still can't balance completely on my left knee. So, just taking it one step at a time. Okay, so I'm not resisting the bike completely because it's decently balanced. So, let me go here. One hand only throughout this exercise. Can do that with the finger. This is the tricky part on this side. I'm gonna switch hands. Usually, people don't switch hands because that's uh, the advanced for doing it, but for my sake, I'm just switching hands because this is scary, man. Like, this is where I drop my bike, this part of it on my knee, like at that point of time there is a top case and fully loaded. One hand. You can see it's moving so it's not on the side stand. See that? And you see the balance here, like at this point of time, the bike is almost weightless because the gravity is doing the most of the action. But when you tilt it to the left or the right, you can feel the weight. Well, that completes the circle. Whoa, man, that was slightly uh, nerve wracking, but I'm glad I did it. This is the third or fourth time I'm doing it but i probably didn't do it perfectly people would use only one hand and not lock the handlebar so i'm probably cheating it a bit but still uh, glad i could balance it with just one hand so i've started a q a session on instagram and if you haven't followed me on instagram there's my uh, id if you're new to this channel don't forget to check out my previous videos and if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe so let's answer those questions right now quite a few of them are interesting so let's go 
A few moments later. I picked a few of them that I found were interesting. There are a lot more. I'll answer some of those on Instagram, but uh, let's do some of them here. How's my knee? I can fold it almost completely. Can do some squats. And uh, before this uh, lockdown, I was able to do some leg presses and leg curls. I was just about to join a gym. Still unable to completely balance my entire body on one knee. I can do it on my right knee, but not on the left knee. So still a long way out there. But in that sense, getting there, doing some rehab at home, uh, but need to step it up uh, once this lockdown ends. So the next question is, so hint of upcoming trip. It's definitely in India, especially after this uh, lockdown and all. Let's see how things are by June, July, because that's when the riding season starts. We might do a short two to three day trip once this lockdown ends. Me and Sriman had a plan to do that uh, just two weeks back. We would have been stranded on the road if we were, uh, if we had gone ahead with the trip. He and I were just discussing uh, a few days back about how scary that would have been. If there was one place I would be glad to be stuck, that would be in lay. All the money you have would be mostly useful for the essentials like food, water, and clothes. Anything else is just pointless now. So the next question is about how do I or the group plan the rides? All of us do it and having uh, such a big group makes it easy. But uh, the way we do it is, let's say if you are planning to go to lay, have directions from uh, Hyderabad and just uh, zoom in and see the stops in between. So Nagpur, Sagar, Jasi, Agra, Delhi, Chandigarh, it shows through Manali. So wherever we feel there are alternate options, we keep exploring that. We pick a destination, look at Google Maps, look at the best way to reach that destination. Best way would be the easiest and the smoothest ride. If there are locations where we would probably find some beautiful scenic options, then uh, let's say highway would pick that. At least till last year, we tried to ride not more than 500 kilometers or 10 hours whichever is early in a day so that's how we uh, divide uh, each part of the trip we have done 700 kilometers and sometimes 10 hour rides ended up being 18 hour rides like uh, the one from kolkata to siliguri so those were unplanned but the beauty of this kind of planning is that you will evolve and slowly increase your uh, stamina to do longer rides 500 uh, kilometers or 10 hours uh, which are comes first is i think an ideal duration for uh, slightly uh, intermediate riders not beginners beginners i would say probably 250 kilometers or five hours and when you have a group like us which is uh, constantly evolving we try to push our distances so from 500 now we can do up to 650 easily so maybe we can do up to 750 uh, in the next rides it all depends on the ride the temperature the bikes and uh, the luggage that we have we plan as much as possible but we also have to keep looking at uh, the alternatives like in our lay ride from Srinagar uh, we decide to carry fuel uh, canisters because we know that our bike's capacities would be uh, too short and we would need extra fuel that's when we started carrying we didn't carry it from Hyderabad it's just too much of weight coming to the next question how uh, the gang formed I think Sriman's doing uh, that in his next video. Stay tuned for that. But in short, we all uh, met uh, through the Benelis. Uh, I had a Benelis 300, Sriman and Rochi had a Benelis 600. Me and Rochi first met in a breakfast ride in December 2015. I think it's December 28th. That's when I shot actually my first vlog, my first Benelis ride vlog. So don't forget to check that out. Since then we became friends, but Goa ride is when we actually clicked as a group. And that's when I met Sriman, Kishore uh, and few others. They all rode, it, rode to Goa from Hyderabad. I was supposed to do uh, the ride from Hyderabad to Goa, but my knees fell sick. So I decided to fly there instead of wasting two extra days. Yeah, since then, uh, you know the rest of the story. But for detailed explanation, I would say check uh, Sriman's vlog. And the main reason I sold my bike, because I've explained it in the last vlog, it's just that I'm not using it and I'm not doing enough justice to it. I'm unable to ride it in the city because it's not ideal for city in traffic. It gets slightly warm actually hot and this bike's the main tourer so i just felt i didn't need another bike at this moment so what's my next bike that's my next bike jokes apart duke 790 was i was this close to buying it but somehow it didn't impress me in the first look but i had a chance to ride it a few days after that in fact immediately after staying it in the showroom i know man that was a beast of a bike that was a beast like i have 
had experience of street triple in the city but this is much more fun in the city street triple is amazing in the guards when you hit that high rpms duke 790 was just brilliant uh, in the city in those speeds under 60 this was just a rocket proper definition of a pocket rocket so a question connecting to that is a speed twin or truxton r is there going to be a hayabusa in the group that's an interesting question because one reason i sold my street twin was because i kind of bored with the whole classic uh, my first bike was a classic 500. I had street twin for almost 33,000 kilometers. I just felt that I wanted a change. In that sense, we have speed twin in the group. We have Thruxton in the group. Both are amazing. I would place still Thruxton R at the top of the league and then the speed twin. Hayabusa? I don't think so. And it's they've stopped uh, selling Hayabusas in India since March. It's kind of getting loud here, right? With the neighbors. So let's go. In case you're wondering where my coffee truck is. That's there. I kept it on OLX and uh, it's ready to be sold because we are transforming Aroma Lake Coffee into a different concept. Uh, so that's scaling up the idea from a coffee truck. Coffee truck was just a proof of concept and now we are scaling it up to a shop or a kiosk model. So let's see how that works out. And uh, if you're wondering why people are out in my colony, it's a huge colony. We are maintaining social distancing, we are not using any surfaces, public surfaces that people can get infected with. So each of us are maintaining our space. We can still walk in our colony because it's huge, private and secured. There's no entry for outsiders now. This is where I come for a walk, like approximately 15 minutes of a walk every evening. It's needed for my knee. I can't just sit at home. The things about what five things I will do after April 14th, let's assume that this whole lockdown ends by April 14th. The first five things I would probably do are take my bike out, go ride, probably do some grocery shopping and meet my friends and probably uh, watch a movie if possible if everything ends. But look at the sign. This is pretty good. Whoever came up with the sign is actually cool. Parks are closed so we don't sit in common surfaces but we still have people doing their uh, stuff. Okay, next question is about business role model. In fact, uh, it was 2007 when I was in US doing my masters in biotechnology when I first came across an Apple MacBook. It was so white like this and uh, I was in love with that. There was that halo effect around that laptop that it was so aspirational. I bought it at like thousand dollars when everyone was buying a Windows laptop for 700. But within three years, I sold that for almost uh, 900. They are amazing in value and one of the best laptops you can buy ever. So it was during that time that I learned about Steve Jobs and uh, reading his story, how he came up founding uh, Apple. And he was so inspirational. Like I used to watch his keynotes so many times that I got addicted to most of his ideas till I had to come back to India and manage my insurance business which my father founded and ran for almost 13-14 years. He started with two employees and got it up to 250 plus employees which I managed for almost two to three years. Once I joined the company, I realized the work that my father put in, the reputation that he had in, in the industry, like the MDs of major insurance companies would be waiting for his appointment. We were one of the top 10 insurance brokers in India. So that was a big achievement for someone who was probably, let's say, a scale four. So that would be like a manager level uh, job in an in a public sector company. So along with Steve Jobs, my father would be my business role model. Connecting to that about this question about investments and stocks, watch out for the next vlog because that's probably too long to tell in this vlog. And I would say first start actually reading about stuff before you hear, listen to people like me or anyone else because the markets right now are tanking big time but that also presents an opportunity. So I would say watch out for the next vlog because that's going to be about investments and uh, stock markets and everything about finances. Talking about my profession, my schooling, my college, Gurucharan Kodali is my name. Go to linkedin.com, you'd find everything about my job, my studies, professional career and all. And uh, talking about my ultimate uh, dream. I never had one like, okay, I want to do this. 
maybe one thing i always wanted to work in like a tech firm as a product manager i tried doing that to some extent but didn't work out i'm happy with what i have right now and uh, tips for young professional vloggers young vloggers who are coming up is don't do it for the money just uh, do it for the sake of if you are enjoying what you're doing so if you want to do you have certain idea and pursue it don't do it for the money or because someone else is doing it or growing and they're earning money that won't give you any joy or satisfaction because that's what you need at the end of it so i'll finish the work and catch you guys inside the home for the rest of the cushions okay let's uh, talk about the vlogging setup so this is the camera that you see it's a sony a6300 there's the road mic with the dead cat and i use this camera when i feel like i would uh, need uh, some bokeh shots or when i need good mic most of the time it's the iphone that i use it shoots in 4k 60 frames per second with no mic additions i use only final cut pro to enhance the audio but besides that i don't use anything else this is a very simple setup that i use efficient easy and i'm looking forward to the next iphone 12 uh, because it's been three years since i got iphone 10 and i also use the gopro while i'm on the bike also i use the insta 360 if you haven't seen the sikkim vlogs do check them out amazing camera N need to do some hard work editing the videos but i would say the best investment that i did in terms of cameras was the insta 360 and coming to the best riding gear i think it's a matter of the money and your bike so let's say you have a super bike you would probably need uh, the best riding gear in that category if you are riding let's say 350 cc royal enfield you don't need that kind of riding gear i would say go with uh, a rhinox riding jacket and maybe an empty helmet that's fine typically the calculation that i do is invest 10% of your bike's cost on your riding gear. So in that sense, if you're buying a 20 lakh uh, bike, invest at least two lakhs on your riding gear. Uh, two lakh bike, 20,000 at least. In 20,000, you can get amazing stuff. Like you can get a Rhinox riding jacket, a pant, decent uh, Orazo boots or some other riding boots, and even a helmet within 20,000. Based on your bike and riding conditions, pick the riding gear. There is nothing like best riding gear. It depends on your budget. And uh, the final question uh, about uh, the Scorpion helmet. This is the helmet that I've been using since September. It's a carbon fiber 30,000 rupee helmet. It's light, but when I add the uh, Senna and the GoPro, it kind of feels heavy. But in terms of noise isolation, this is quite good. The best part of it is insulation inside is adjustable so that if you feel there's a lot more wind coming up, you can increase the air pressure inside the helmet. It has inflatable uh, chin pads, so it is much tighter if you want it or much more uh, comfortable. That can adjust the noise that gets into your helmet to some extent. Yeah, that's it guys for uh, questions. I'll answer remaining questions in the vlog uh, on Instagram, so don't forget to follow me there. And, uh, that's it for today's vlog. Hope you have a great uh, rest of the weekend and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.